Hello, and welcome to UAN Governmental Fund Accounting 101. In this video, we will be covering Introduction to Fund Accounting, Chapter 1 of 3. Additional chapters in this series are Maintaining Cash and Fund Balances and the Uniform Chart of Accounts. Let's begin! The purpose of this course is to provide newly elected or appointed fiscal officers a basic understanding of governmental fund accounting prior to training on the UAN software. It is an introductory course intended to familiarize you with the terms and concepts that are going to become a part of your everyday work. If you don't know the language, it is difficult to ask a question. The course is not a complete fund accounting resource. UAN support only answers questions about the software, so we can introduce you to the basics. You will have to find other resources to complete your fund accounting training. The first question that has to be answered is what is a fund? Officially, it's a self-contained, self-balancing accounting component. It separates the total money of the entity by legal or purpose restrictions. Okay, so there's the definition, but what does that mean? Let's take a closer look at our animated pie chart. This is a great illustration of funds. The pie represents our total cash balance. The individual slices of pie represent separate funds. They operate independently of each other within the total cash balance. I'm sure you want to know why cash is divided into funds. The very basic answer is that it provides accountability of the government's resources. When the separation of money is required by law or to comply with a contract or agreement. Residents should be able to scrutinize their government and determine if the money is being spent for the purpose it was collected. Don't we all want to know if our tax dollars are being spent correctly? You don't want an angry mob on your hands, so let's dig a little deeper and gain a better understanding of governmental fund accounting. Separate funds are required due to the nature of use or purpose when money must be used for a specific purpose and can't be commingled with other government money. So our cemetery levy money can only be spent on cemetery, and the same is true for the sewer and water collections. You can't spend water money on sewer or sewer money on cemetery or the fire levy money on anything but fire. These taxes and rates have been charged and collected to support a specific purpose and they cannot be used for anything else. So now that you know what funds are, I need to explain how to manage fund accounting. No matter what you've been told, it's not like keeping your checkbook at home. Managing the cash and budget of a government is like managing your own family cash and budget, but in a very limited way. You must know how much you have in the bank and how much you need to pay your bills. But that's about it. Managing the cash and budget of a government is unlike managing a family budget because the government's money is separated into funds, it's restricted by law, and the authority to spend is authorized by adopted legislation. So that's not at all like a personal checkbook. There are two parts to managing fund accounting. We manage the money in the bank accounts, which make up our fund balances. And we manage the budget, which is made up of estimated resources and a board-adopted appropriation, which is our spending plan. You're going to manage each of these elements, one on the left and the other on the right. They don't balance with each other. You maintain this peaceful state by understanding how to properly manage these two elements of fund accounting. The cash and budget are equally important but operate differently. Cash is our total fund balances. They must reconcile with the total bank account and investment balances each month. The budget does not reconcile with the cash, nor does it reflect an available cash balance. It's a plan. You must make sure the money is received and spent according to the plan. But the budget doesn't tell you how much money you have in the bank to spend, and the cash doesn't tell you how much you have available to spend from the budget. They are different. Let's explore how the budget is creating using a family example. 
A family decides to create a budget that includes the following spending. They want to pay their monthly bills, eat out once a week, take a vacation once a year, and save for college for two children. They first have to determine the estimated resources available. What is their beginning cash balance? They have to answer the question, how much do we have? Then they calculate their estimated annual revenue by answering the question, how much will we receive? So let's get started. Our family makes a list of all their money in bank accounts and cash to arrive at the total beginning cash balance. Next, they estimate their annual revenue. The large cloud of money is their entire year of income. This money trickles into the family's bank accounts a little at a time throughout the year. So they take dad and mom's net paychecks, multiply them out to the annual estimate, and add estimated interest on their savings accounts. This gives them the estimated annual revenue of $66,300. We know they aren't going to have this money all at once. The family adds their cash and estimated annual revenue to determine their total resources available for expenditure, $75,197.76. Let's see how they plan to spend this money. The family lists their expenses that are fixed, normal bills that must be paid each month or throughout the year. For example, cell phones, household mortgages and taxes, fuel, car repairs, utilities, student loans, and food. So you can see what I mean by fixed expenses. These bills must be paid. The family multiplies the fixed cost to the annual amount and adds them together. They burn through quite a bit of their resources on fixed costs. The family looks at how much of their resources available remains after subtracting fixed costs. Our original resources available, $75,197.76, less the fixed costs, leaves us with $30,905.76 left to budget. The family gets to decide what to do with the rest of this money. The family plans a vacation, college savings, a home addition, eating out once a week, and building up their rainy day savings. They determine how much per month they want to save or spend and calculate that out to the annual amount. This gives them an additional 24516 in spending to enter into the budget. The family adds their estimated fixed cost and flexible spending together to determine their total estimated annual expenditures, and then they see if they have a balanced budget. They started with $75,197.76 of resources available. They have budgeted 68,808 for spending. They have a remaining $6,389.76 of resources available. They don't have to budget 100% of the resources available, and because they are not planning to spend more than the resources available, they have a balanced budget. How would a family apply the principles of fund accounting to their annual budget? They must establish a fund and a beginning cash balance for each expenditure purpose, track cash, revenue, and spending by fund all year, reconcile the total funds to the bank balances each month. Let's see what that would look like. Here's a sample chart that shows our family's plan using governmental fund accounting. On the cash balance side, notice that they've combined the two savings accounts into one account. In fund accounting, you don't need separate bank accounts for funds. You invest cash, not fund balances, to get a better rate of interest. So they have the cash, the checking account, and one savings account. Added together, it's their total cash balance. On the fund side, at the right, they've established funds and divided the cash balance among them. The general fund is to manage all receipts and payments that aren't specific to the other funds. There are two college savings funds, 
the home addition fund, a rainy day savings fund, a vacation fund, and a project savings fund. Each fund has a beginning fund balance, some are beginning with zero. Add them all together for the total fund balance and note that the total cash balance is equal to the total fund balance. But would a family go to all of this trouble and set up fund accounting? Well, no. A family is probably going to open up a couple of savings accounts and put money in each account to save toward a specific purpose. It's very different than fund accounting. So how are we going to bridge the gap between understanding a family's cash and budget to learn how the government's cash and budget operate? Here's a snapshot of a sample township's bank accounts and funds. On the left are the bank accounts. We have a primary checking, Star Ohio Investment, a CD as an investment, and a cemetery bequest CD. On the right side are their funds and their cash balance. Notice the total cash balance is equal to the total fund balance, but none of the fund balances match a specific bank account. Remember that you don't have to have separate bank accounts for funds, only in very rare occasions to satisfy a trust, contract, or agreement. Let's review the fund list on the right. Almost every entity has a general fund. There are very few exceptions. Most administration costs are paid from the general fund. The sample township also has a gasoline tax and a road and bridge fund for road maintenance expenses. A village may have a street construction maintenance and repair fund, and if a state highway runs through the village, they have a state highway improvement fund. There are two levies, a cemetery levy fund and a fire and EMS levy fund. We also have a road debt fund and a cemetery bequest fund. This makes up a sample township for training purposes. A village, library, or special district won't look exactly like this sample. The funds would have different names established by the uniform chart of accounts. But local levies, taxes, or other restricted money would change this for a township too. Your government funds already exist. You don't get to sit down and decide what funds to create and separate the money into them like our sample family. Your funds have already been established and you have to learn their purposes and restrictions. Unlike our family that sat down and counted their cash and looked at their bank balances to determine a beginning cash balance, the government's beginning of year budget starts with the beginning fund balance carried over from the prior year. Our sample township fiscal officer has estimated the current year annual revenue. What you see on the screen is just a sample of how annual revenue is estimated. We're not going to divide it up by fund at this point in the training. We're just discussing the concepts so you can see how revenue is estimated. Some items are received each month, others semi-annual, annual, or intermittent. They're multiplied out to the annual estimate and then added together. The beginning fund balances and estimated annual revenue are combined to determine the total resources available for expenditure. Again, this would be by fund, but for training purposes at this point, we're just showing the concept of how someone at your entity has estimated revenue. Notice that the non-spendable balance of our cemetery bequest fund is subtracted from our resources available. It's pretty common for townships and libraries to have funds with a non-spendable balance. Non-spendable means it's not included in the resources available for expenditure. It's part of our cash balance, but not a resource available. They considered the expenses that are fixed, normal expenses that must be paid each month or throughout the year. Reviewing each department and fund individually, such as road or sewer. And then they estimated the fixed costs for fuel, salaries, vehicle, building maintenance, road signs, and then let's not forget the administration costs. Each department has its own list of fixed costs. So think about the concept we're discussing, fixed costs for each department and what fund they will be paid from. The concept is the same for township, village, library, and special districts. When we multiply the fixed costs to the annual estimate, you can see we burn through most of our resources available with the items that must be paid. The board reviewed how much was remaining to budget after those fixed costs 
then decided how to allocate the remaining resources available. They want to squeeze every penny out of that budget. The board has decided to do some roof repair at the administration building, purchase a new maintenance vehicle, do some more paving or chip and seal. Finally, they want to add a new employee. Yikes, not him. Oh, that's much better. Okay, so most of these items are one of a time expenditure, but the addition of that new employee is going to add to our ongoing fixed cost in future years. Add the estimated fixed costs and flexible spending together to determine the total estimated annual expenditures. And let's see how this figure impacts our budget. The government had $912,075.14 of resources available, and they adopted appropriations authorizing $897,200 for expenditures. Keep in mind this would be divided by funds. This is just an overall example. They have a balanced budget with $14,875.14 of resources still available. They're not planning to spend more than the resources available, therefore they have created a balanced budget. They can budget the remaining resources available or leave it to be budgeted at a later time if needed. So when is the budget implemented? The governing board usually plans next year's budget during the current year so when January 1st comes around, the plan is ready to be implemented. After December 31st, the carryover cash balance and estimated revenue are certified as the resources available, and then the board adopts appropriations in the form of legislation at an open public meeting. Remember that resources available determine the amount the board can appropriate, and appropriations are adopted by the board and authorized spending for specific purposes. Let's review what you've learned in Chapter 1. Cash is the money received and available. It's divided into funds that are established by law. The budget, by fund, is made up of estimated resources and the legislated authority to spend, known as appropriations. Entities have already established fund balances, so when you start work, your funds and their balances will already exist. The operating budget should already be in place. It will be up to you to review the revenue estimates and appropriations and determine what each figure represents. This concludes Chapter 1 of Fund Accounting 101.